I'm delighted to be joined by Ian Hislop. Now, obviously, uh, and rightly so, uh, ITV's drama has got uh, lots of plaudits. Um, actually, before I come to you and talk about the work of private, I, I am going to go with Anushka, though. Yeah, I just want to talk through the timeline of the scandal because it actually all started a long time ago in 1999 when Tony Blair signed off the Horizon system. And interestingly, Harriet Harman, then a cabinet minister, warned against it, reportedly saying there was a serious risk the project would fail. If I just fast forward to the 2000s, the prosecutions began to ramp up when the post office CEOs were John Roberts and then Adam Crozier. The number of prosecutions of sub postmasters grew grew until a total of over 980 as Robert said I will never forget interviewing one victim Janet Skinner her story of being sent to jail in 2007 brought me to tears an amazing woman by then an amazing man Alan Bates had flagged issues writing to his MP in 2003 he got a reply from the post office minister at the time Stephen Timms who said conflicts are contractual matters for the post office when computer weekly broke this story in 2009 publicly evidence suggested prosecutions were not meeting legal requirements and then private eye with their first story in september 2011 their relentless investigation was spearheaded by journalists like nick wallace and richard brooks and you probably know that by then sir ed davey now leader of the lib dems was post office minister initially refusing to meet Alan Bates although he did later he blames the post office for lying to him he is one of 17 post office ministers since 2016 business secretaries by this point Paula Venels as we know was post office CEO she has now handed back her honor she said in 2015 there was no evidence of miscarriages of justice by 2017, 550 postmasters brought a case to the High Court, which was settled for £58 million, and in total, they have paid out £138 million to 2,700 postmasters. Thanks, So, Ian, um, it's 12 years, yeah. maybe longer, uh, since you and Private Eye started noticing a, what incredible incompetence there was within the post office. Yeah, but I also... think that's generous incompetence. I think it is sort of willful um, lying when they knew the truth. And, 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 and obviously, think... and miscarriages. Why do you think it has taken 12 years? What does it say about our system of governance and government that it's taken 12 years to get to a point where maybe there'll be comprehensive pardons, maybe there'll be proper restitution? Well, I mean, the entire system, the judicial system and the supposed supervision in government preferred to believe the corporate bodies than listen to ordinary people. And the reason this drama was so good, and it really was good, people say to me, oh, God, I mean, so much for journalism. Actually, the journalism fed into the drama. Ooh, ooh, the drama, according to one post, sub-postmistress today, she said two things tipped this this drama and the fact that there's an election and the fact that politicians are wandering about now telling us how concerned they are and how deeply concerned they are and at best they say oh it's all ed davies fault really one lib dem every single man in charge of the post office after that was a conservative who was the prime minister when uh, paula venels the head of the post office was given a cbe it was conservative government it was david cameron and he's still in the cabinet 2019, giving this woman a CBE for services to the post office, everybody involved knew that Horizon did not work. Now, Fujitsu, and I'm glad to see Alex Chalk getting serious here, I mean, we're talking perjury here, we're not talking incompetence. They stole the money from the, the sub-post mistresses. They stole their money and they put it back in the system. Now, that money has gone to fund post office bonuses and Fujitsu's profits. The government has continued to employ Fujitsu. What we need to do is say to Fujitsu now, we want compensation from you. How about, how about £1 million per sub-postmaster or mistress? That amounts to £1 billion, which is nothing compared to what the taxpayer has paid out to Fujitsu. It is absolutely disgraceful, this. And I'm, I'm going to rant now because there isn't much time. The idea that people are saying, have got, well, got, guilty got, no, no, people have could got, make have, a lot of yeah, money. Yeah. They've already made a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, people you have got more time people because we are office. coming back to you in just a couple of minutes so you have got more time i should point out that there 
is a statutory inquiry going on. Yes, and I think we probably have to presume until we've got the, the verdict. No, the you've inquiry. got the judge's verdict in the biggest <laughs> yeah, miscarriage it is, it is, ever. It is certainly the case. He made it absolutely clear. It is clear. certainly the case. It's as funny I think I've looked you, at, Robert. It is certainly the case, having looked at the judgment, uh, that, uh, that, that, that it, there are huge questions yep. to be asked about what Fujitsu disclosed and yep. why they didn't disclose And there is no reason for any of your lawyers to have a heart attack. We're it not having a heart attack. <laughs> We're not having a heart attack. We're not having a heart attack. Under no circumstances will I have a heart attack on air about something as interesting as this. Now, don't go away because, believe it or not, Ian, in lively form, will be back, and so will Jess and Jake. Uh, welcome back. Ian Heslop is still with me. Now, whatever you think of Ian's passionate, uh, shall we say, criticism of uh, Fujitsu and of the post office, I am told I have to read out this statement from Fujitsu. It says this, the current post office uh, uh, Horizon IT statutory inquiry is examining complex events stretching back over 20 years to understand who knew what, when and what they did with that knowledge. The inquiry has reinforced the devastating impact on postmasters' lives and that of their families and Fujitsu has apologised for its role in their suffering. Fujitsu is fully committed to supporting the inquiry in order to understand what happened and to learn from it. Out of respect for the inquiry process, it would be inappropriate, apparently, for Fujitsu to comment further. I wonder whether they'll comment after having had <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that, that's, that's classic corporate nonsense, isn't it? It would be inappropriate. Of course it's not inappropriate. Comment but, now. But, 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 the, the judge made it absolutely but clear I to, I, that but this I, money was sure. stolen. We do need, we do need, we do need to move on though to another aspect. Yes, it. you pointed out that uh, quite a lot of people, for their presumably political party political reasons, yep. have decided to have a go at Ed Davey. But how many reputations are going to be ruined by this, in your view? Oh, loads, um, right the way through, from the judge who refused to look at the original brilliant article in Computing Weekly and just said, no, 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 um, this, this, this isn't right, I know the computer's right. I mean, it isn't that people think computers are always right. They were told by human beings who knew perfectly well that there was a blip in the system that the system was working, it was robust, it was perfect. It wasn't. And this presumption of innocence was serious people who sit on boards and are in charge of things know what's right. Ordinary people, i.e. sub-postmasters and mistresses, must be lying. No matter how many people said, look, Look, we know these people. They run our village. They are really good people. They weren't believed. And it took and that is so long. That is, that is astonishing. How do you think... Because among the many issues that I find incredibly difficult to get my head round is how you can have an institution like the post office that knows that sub-postmasters are sort of really valued members of their community and have been for decades and decades, how they can suddenly think that they've been invaded by a bunch of crooks. I, it, it, it's so I weird. They, I don't think they did think it. That's the problem. Mm. Is that they maybe thought it at, at the very, very early stages. You should, as a constituency MP, you'll get a case in and you'll think, oh, I'm not sure about that. And then you get four more that sound really similar and you start to think, this is getting There's to a critical mass. There's an issue. Mm. Um, but it, they lied. There was no critical mass. No, no, but, 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 but they told so each the, one the of them, this is really important, they told each one of the complainants, you are the, the only, only one, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. and that mm. is straightforward exactly. fraud. So I think, the, I think the real thing, the point is, there was a mass cover-up yeah. by the post office, and as far as I can tell, to some extent, the civil service were complicit. And, well. and, there was and, a mass cover-up. And, I mean, and the actually, other... the real thing yeah. that we should be talking about, is I know Porter Van Ols has given up her CBO, I'd like to give it back to her because I want to see her stripped of her CBE, and I also want all of those bonuses that were given for oh, high-performing post serious office managers with your record on the honours system. <laughs> I mean, well, my can record, we, can we I have, have a record on the honours, then? but I would like to see <laughs> those bonuses and performance-related pay but, but, stripped away. But, we did very I mean, you're certainly right, and I do, think it's a fundamental, I do think it's a fundamental issue, which, again, I'm slightly surprised isn't being debated more. Allegedly, this management, including, uh, you know, Paul Reynolds, uh, turned the business around. But the, we now know, because oh, of the hundreds of millions being paid out, those weren't real profits. No, they right? were that, You know, this business was not turned exactly. round. Like in the From having a public service where ethic, we stripped bonuses, in which we they were operating in the public good, they were incentivised to make money 
for the post office. And that led to ignoring what was going on in the hope of getting better remuneration. And that's disgraceful. <laughs> and all of them should have to pay those bonuses back. 100%. But, I mean, but the problem we got in this country, and it's a serious problem, is no government has actually put in place any kind of system that actually enables clawback in these kind of circumstances. And in the end, you know, you're sort of relying on the goodwill of people to hand back money. Well, that's, when has that well, ever happened? One thing we well, do control disgraceful. is their massive taxpayer-funded pensions. We do have control of that, and we can pass an emergency piece of legislation, a parliamentary pardon. Why can't we do the same thing with our pensions? Well, why couldn't you do it so long ago? The fact that it takes an ITV drama, and suddenly, having been told their entire campaigning lives, this is very difficult, you'll have to go in front of a judge, this is very, very expensive, oh, this morning it isn't, tomorrow we'll pass legislation and you're all exonerated. I mean, it is absolutely fatuous <laughs> for this government to claim, hey, we're really acting now. Did nothing. Did nothing no, no, sorry, the whole sorry, time. No, sorry. That no, you're is, not sorry. That is demonstrably not sorry. That is demonstrably complete and utter. Why did nonsense. you give her a CBE that, in 2019? Why did you appoint her to the cabinet delete, office? Complete, you talk her over nonsense. everyone else, and you've been doing it in the entire program. Shh, Ian, Ian, let him speak. <laughs> <laughs> Two wrongs don't make that a right. That program, <laughs> which you claim to love so much, and was an amazing piece of drama put together by. ITV, what you're saying, I don't. Ends, claim to, ends. Why am I claiming to love that program? Ends. I did like that program. You can't just talk nonsense and not it's be not interrupted. It's not nonsense. That programme ends in 2019 with that court case. Yeah. In the intervening period, yeah. we £130 million pound plus has Actually, been paid out. Actually, you did say that earlier, Jake, and unfortunately, we're going to tell annoying go and ask. Over. The programme's over. Now we've got the question. All right. I don't think we're going to have a chance to tell you what's coming next week. Um, but anyway, bye, everybody. <laughs>